And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Sometimes you go into a game knowing you're going to like it. And that is the case with Welcome Back to the Dungeon. Because Welcome to the Dungeon is one of my favorite small games. It's in my top 100 games of all time. I really like it. It's a quick kind of push your luck, outthink other people game. And so Welcome Back to the Dungeon is essentially the sequel slash expansion to the original game. If you've never heard of Welcome to the Dungeon, that's fine, because this game is completely playable on its own. Let's take a look. In this game, there are four different heroes, a ninja, bard, necromancer, and princess. And each round of the game, you're going to choose one of them. So let's say we choose the princess. You're going to spread the princess out. The princess has two hit points, but Mr. Charm adds five. The chaperone adds three. She also has some piece of equipment here, a great sword, a royal scepter, a dragon leash, and a family crown. Uh, each player is going to get two cards. These represent your hit points, and they also show you all the monsters in the game and possibility of special monsters. There is a deck of monster cards in each of these monster cards. There's two number ones, there's two number twos. The monsters don't have any special abilities. They have symbols on them because certain abilities can affect uh, the, the different monsters that are in the game. So for example here we see the nine shows this little leash here, the dragon leash, because it can be defeated by the princess's dragon leash. So this deck is going to be shuffled. There's also six special monsters that are in the game, and each player has a card that kind of reminds them which the special monsters do. These are going to be shuffled, and two of them are going to be placed in the deck. The deck is then going to be shuffled. One person goes first, and we just go around the table. On your turn, you can draw a card and do something with it, or you can pass. If you draw a card, you can look at the card, and you can then add it to the dungeon. Or if you draw a card, you can discard it and get rid of one of the tiles in the middle. So each player is going to do that. And so as time goes by, there's going to be some cards here in the dungeon. And there's going to be different uh, things that are out of here. So let's say, for example, this is what's left. The princess has Mr. Charm, the royal scepter, and the dragon leash. After a while, people are going to go, I can't use this and go through this pile. So they'll pass. And eventually one person will be left, and that person has to go through the dungeon. They're going to take this board here, mark their current hit points, so the princess has seven hit points, and then they're going to start going through the dungeon one card at a time. So this one's a five. All right, well, that makes the princess lose five hit points. She starts at seven and goes down to two. The next one here is a six. Well, that kills the princess. Um, now see, she could defeat the dragon and the next monster if the dragon had been in the deck. Or if she had drawn the second monster, so if the dragon had shown up, she would have defeated that one automatically. And the next monster after that. And if this one had shown up, she would have defeated that because it would have been the second of five. And this one defeats the second monster of each kind. Um, so she might have survived, but she didn't. So the player who had taken the princess through would take one of the reference cards and turn it over. Okay? So you, when you're all, you, both those cards are over, you're kind of eliminated. Had she won, though she would have gotten one of these cards. And you're trying to get two of these to win the game. I mentioned that there's these six special monsters. Uh, the gelatinous cube basically makes you get rid of a card. This guy's actually a good one and he will kill the next monster. This one is one for whatever number of monster he's in in a pile. So if he's the first monster, he's one. But if he's the eighth monster, he's eight. This one's just a zero. This one is one for every equipment card that's out there. And this guy is four, unless you have one of these cards, in which case he is eight. And there's also, each character is different. So the necromancer comes with a zombie pet and an evil cloak. And he also can defeat vampires and add their strength to his hit point. So he can take the four characters and add them. And when you die, you come back to life with one hit point. If your hit point's two or greater, always kills monsters that are one and three. Defeat one monster, add their total strength to your hit point. He seems very powerful. And he is powerful, but you're probably not going to keep his stuff. Uh, so he's probably going to lose some of this. The ninja can defeat vampires automatically, defeat a monster, and then discard a different equipment tile so he can kill one monster straight up. And all monsters with seven or greater, 
Here, if your hit point's less than five, monsters with strength one, three, and five are taken care of. And then we have the Bard, who if his hit point's less than five, one and two months, uh, odd strength monsters do one to him, and even strength do two. He's a fancy hat and a glamorous tunic. This kills an even strength monster. The sword can kill an odd strength monster. And this one kills goblins and reduces the damage of all other monsters by one. So that's pretty much it. The first person to get two of these wins, or if you get two of these, you're eliminated. So if everyone else but you has been eliminated, you also win. Now, Welcome Back to the Dungeon is actually better than Welcome to the Dungeon. And that's mostly because of the special monsters. I really like the special monsters. And you have two of them, and you can shuffle them and throw them in. And so each of them does something cool. And, and sometimes they're helpful. So, you know, that's, that's a neat thing. And you can take those special monsters and easily add them to Welcome to the Dungeon. So you put these together, and you could use Welcome to the Dungeon, Welcome Back to the Dungeon. Although you have to be, you have to keep an eye kind of on which monsters you're using and so on. It, mixing them together is fine. Um, I usually find it best just to keep them separate to some degree. And so if you're playing with the Bard, we use this monster deck. And if you're playing with one of the original characters, you use their monster deck. Not that big of a deal, but they are compatible. Um, but, again, if you've never played this before, it is really fun. You might think, player elimination? I'm not really a big fan of player elimination. I understand that, but this game is really short. We're talking 15 minutes. So you're out, and then you just wait till the next game. And if you're out, that means the game is pretty close to ending. Also, if you're out of the game, that means you got to go through the dungeon. And going through the dungeon is pretty cool. You can win this game by never going through the dungeon, just by passing. Um, in fact, I often see the game ends more often with player elimination than it does with one person going through the dungeon successfully. It's really an intriguing game. Uh, I've seen games where the, the deck gets filled up and they leave most of the equipment there. Um, but sometimes I've seen all the equipment go and then suddenly everyone starts passing. It's really curious because it's basically saying, I can go through the dungeon without my sword. Well, I can go through the dungeon without my sword and without my sidekick. Well, I can do this. And, but if you know a card's in there, for example, I can put the dragon in the deck knowing I have a card that defeats the dragon. Then you take that piece of equipment that defeats the dragon. Then I'm out. You know, and it's, it's really fun. And this works really well also as a two-player game. Uh, I played this with all the different counts of players, um, with two, three, or four. And it just it says 30 minutes here in the box, but the game is really uh, faster than that. Two-player game is really fast. You can play that like in 10 minutes. Um, Four-player game is probably the longest, but it's still fun. The artwork is fun. The monsters are silly. And it's just kind of that, what are you going to do? I don't know, I think. And then you're trying to guess what cards the other person in. You know what card you have pulled out when you take a piece of equipment out. So you know maybe that, they're, that the dragon isn't even in the thing. So it, it's this kind of, I know some information about the deck, but not enough to help me completely. And there's a lot of laughter as the cards are flipped over one at a time and you see what happens. Highly recommend it. Better than Welcome to the Dungeon. But it's basically the same game with just some addition. The special monsters add a lot. But either way, very, very fun game. Certainly one I highly recommend. Dice Tower Judgment into my collection. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Okay. Boop. Boop.